welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a podcast exclusively designed to create more reproductive health awareness and discuss your fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining on tonight's Egg Whisperer Show. The topic of tonight's show is how to have the best egg retrieval experience ever. My name is Dr. Amy, also known as an egg whisperer, and I do egg retrievals, and I want you to learn my secrets as to how to have the most comfortable, the most relaxing, and the best experience possible. So I don't know about you, but when I'm going somewhere that's totally foreign to me that I've never been before, I want to know every single thing possible about the destination. Well, in the old days, we had maps, right? So we'd pull out a map and we'd take a look at where we were going. These days, we go to Google Maps and we put it in and we know exactly what's going to happen. But if someone were to say to me, and I had no idea what they were talking about, and they would say, you're going to have an egg retrieval, I'd say, where do I show up? What do I do? What do I wear? Who do I talk to? Who am I going to meet? What is it going to be like there? How am I going to feel? That's what I'm going to describe to you during this show. And I hope you're going to learn some really helpful tips. So first, we have to know what we're doing. I like to talk in ways that people understand what I'm saying. So things that you're fearful of are not going to be so scary. So when you're going in for your egg retrieval and even beforehand, your doctor is measuring follicles on your ovaries. And you're probably used to these ultrasounds. And these are the small fluid-filled sacs, also known as follicles, that your doctor is going to be measuring. And then as you're taking your hormone shots, and these are self-administered in the skin of your tummy, these follicles are going to grow. And as they're growing, you're going to feel more swollen. Everyone's experience is different. But many of my patients who have, let's say, more than 10 follicles growing will say they feel like they're going from zero to maybe four months pregnant in 10 days or less. So imagine... You don't know what it's like to be that bloated ever before. And all of a sudden you're feeling this bloated. If you're going into this experience, knowing that that's something that may happen, it's a lot less scary if you didn't know that that was going to happen going into it. So these are the things that I ask my patients to be prepared with at home before their egg retrieval. And I'm not selling any yummy protein shakes or anything like that. There's so many different products out there, but find something that's going to be really hydrating and make you feel really good about yourself, really healthy, and something that's not going to make you feel really sick to your stomach. Because as your ovaries are swelling, you're going to have less room for food sometimes, and then you may want to just rely on a smoothie or eating smaller meals. And then the other thing that you've probably heard of is the Mediterranean diet. It just reminds me of going somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea, and that just sounds really relaxing. But anyways, there are so many different recipes for success out there. You know, what I tell my patients is just don't try anything new. Just eat things that you're used to. In California, we're used to really healthy food, fresh fruits and vegetables. So if that's not something that you're accustomed to, maybe this is the best time to get into the best shape of your life and focus on not just your fertility health, but your overall health and reshape your diet and talk to a nutritionist who can help you with that. And then I do recommend meditation and deep breathing exercises. So There's so many different apps out there. Find one that you like. Find one that you can connect to. Find one that's easy to go to on your phone and practice those deep breathing meditation exercises so that you're not anxious going into your egg retrieval procedure. And if you're feeling super anxious and you feel like you might start having panic attacks just thinking about it, talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor very specifically about what they can do to ease your anxiety. And it's really important to actually tell them what you're anxious about. So for my patients, as you can imagine with how much I talk on this show, I certainly go through the details of what to expect going into the egg retrieval. And I'll continue to share that now, but for patients that are really anxious, sometimes the night before the egg retrieval, I have them take a medication for anxiety and also a medication three hours before their egg retrieval. So if this is something that you think would benefit you, be sure to talk to your doctor, okay? So now there's one emergency that we don't like, at the time of the egg retrieval. We call that a sperm emergency. And we also don't like it when the partner passes out while the female partner is having her IV placed. Be sure that your partner has had a really good breakfast and that you've talked about what's going to happen that day. So if there's anxiety about collection, and you know what I mean by a sperm emergency, that means not being able to collect under pressure, freeze a sample in advance. That takes away the anxiety and talk through what's going to happen that morning. Where is he going to collect? Is he comfortable doing that? Would you rather get a hotel room, collect there, and bring the cup in? And those aren't things that you do that day in the moment. Those are things that you talk about in advance. You coordinate with the lab and make sure that everyone is aware with what you're doing, when you're going to arrive, 
because all of these things are coordinated with the IVF lab and they certainly want those times in advance so that there are no issues at all with not having a collection room available or anything like that. So remember collecting in a hotel room, collecting at home, doing a sperm freeze in advance, and talk to your doctor about your particular situation as to how many days in advance your guy should ejaculate to have the freshest DNA. Yes, these are things that I talk about literally every day, all day. So now let's talk about the egg retrieval day. So my patients will check in 45 minutes before their egg retrieval time, and they would have taken their last shot 36 hours before their egg retrieval time. So when you check in, it's usually really early in the morning, you know, typically before 9 a.m., sometimes as early as, let's say, 5.30 a.m., and there's no eating or drinking after usually midnight the night before. So when you check in, you're going to be greeted by a very nice nurse who's going to help you get dressed in a very gorgeous gown and a very beautiful cap. We call that a hospital gown and a hospital cap. So then I will be there to meet you and one of us will have no underwear on and it will not be me. Don't worry. I just thought that was funny. The nurse will place the IV and then after your IV placement, you'll meet the anesthesiologist who will review all your concerns and hopefully reassure you that everything's going to be okay. And then together we walk into the operating room and an egg retrieval is literally an ultrasound while you're asleep. So the probe goes in the vagina, like I said, a pelvic ultrasound while you're asleep. And through the wall of the vagina, a very, very thin needle goes through into the ovary, into each of those black circles, also known as follicles, and fluid is drained out and passed to the embryologist. And then the embryologist is under a hood counting out the eggs and saying to the doctor, I have one egg, I have two eggs, I have three eggs. And it's really fun to hear as the follicles are being drained, the count that the embryologists, also known as the embryo whisper, are collecting for the doctor and the patient. Most patients walk up to the door, they greet the embryologist before the egg retrieval. There's some sort of name check that goes on. And what I do with my patients is I review I call it the Assisted Reproductive Technology Order Form. So I review it and I say, that's your order sheet for the momlet. That's one last checks and balances so that we're all on the same page. So for example, I'll say, hi guys, I'm excited for this morning. I'm looking forward to collecting this number of eggs. This is the number that we were thinking that we're gonna get. At the end of the procedure, we're gonna find out if this is the exact number. And then I confirm, do you wanna do ICSI? And this has already been discussed in the past. But sometimes people change their minds about things and I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page we all have the same set of expectations as to when the next updates are going to come because we want to make sure that there are never any mistakes. So after the egg retrieval, we go right back to where we started in the pre-op, post-op area. And then if you came with a partner, your partner will sit right next to you, hold your hand, whisper sweet nothings, and probably try and get you to say things for the first 30 minutes coming out of anesthesia that you will never remember. Just kidding. No one ever says anything embarrassing. And even if you did say anything embarrassing, I wouldn't tell you anyways. So here are four must-haves post-retrieval that I tell all my patients. Number one, pain medication. So you just had a needle that beat up your ovaries pretty good. Depending on how many eggs you had retrieved, some people are super sensitive even if it's two eggs, and then some people have no pain if it, let's say it's 20 eggs, but you don't know how you're gonna feel. And the last thing you wanna do at 2 a.m. in the morning is not be able to sleep because you have pretty sharp cramping pain. So I prescribe my patients a version of Tylenol with codeine, Vicodin, Percocet, something like that, just so they can get through the first night. I would say 95% of my patients can go back to work the next day. About 5% need to take that day off too. So talk to your doctor, ask them, what do you think my recovery will be like? And then they'll tell you based on the number of eggs that they retrieved, what they expect. And it's nice to have that first week after your egg retrieval to be less scheduled for yourself as far as work commitments, expectations, and travel. And then if you're feeling great, you can certainly go back to doing the things that you like, talk to your doctor about whether intercourse is okay, going back to exercise is okay. And what I tell my patients, it's not unusual to feel a little bit of breast tenderness after the egg retrieval, and then to feel a little bit more swollen, maybe two to three days after, and that should go away. And it ultimately goes away with that period. And the period that you get can be anywhere from 10 to 14 days after the egg retrieval. And sometimes it can be pretty heavy, Sometimes it's not heavy at all. But when it's pretty heavy, if you weren't expecting that it might be, that can be scary. So be sure to have pain meds on hand and anything you need as far as sanitary napkins as well or tampons. So back to the other three must-haves, stool softeners, because as your ovaries, and if you've taken pain medications as well as the anesthesia medications, you can have a, we'll just call it a poop slowdown. So you want to make sure that you have stool softeners on hand so you don't have to run to the store when you're not comfortable. And having panty liners at home and always an emergency contact. So for me, my patients know how to get a hold of me. If there's ever an issue, they have a question, they know how to reach me. 
But if you're having an egg retrieval, be sure to know who to contact, if there's a nurse line, a doctor line, so that if you're having pain, concerns, any issues at all, you want to be able to reach someone so that they can address them so you can sleep through the night really comfortably. So once you get home from, the, from your egg retrieval, you're just going to want to sleep maybe two to three hours or so. You'll feel rested and then you can go about your day. I tell patients don't change any passwords, don't do any major transactions, don't sign any legal documents because maybe that day you're still going to be a little bit loopy as the pain medications are wearing off or the anesthesia medications. And maybe have some things around you that bring you joy like nice flowers, a candle, maybe a cabana boy, I'm just saying. So next is finding out and waiting about the information about your embryos, the fertilization rate, how your embryos are growing, how many blastocysts you have. And it's really important for you to ask questions. Ask your doctor, when do I expect to hear from you? Who's going to be talking to me? Because I've had so many patients come to me from all over talking to me about their IVF cycles. And I love to learn as much as possible about people because every learning experience just helps inform me about what I can do to help them with their next steps and hopefully most successful steps. But what I find is a lot of people don't know how many mature eggs they had, the fertilization rate, how many blastocysts, the quality. And if, even in when they did genetic testing, which ones were normal and the quality of the ones that were normal. So ask those questions after your IVF cycle. Two weeks later for my patients, I will always set up an in-person appointment to review the complete embryology report, the quality report, my patients also get a mito score. So that's the mitochondrial count in each embryo. And then I calculate an implantation rate for them. I rank the embryos. We talk about future family planning, how many babies my patients want. We talk about implantation testing, uh, fertility gene testing, and then we make calendars and talk about next steps. So those are things that you want to do in person with your doctor one-on-one -on -one so that you feel like you've made the best decisions possible for your precious embryos that you worked so hard for. And if you had a really pleasant egg retrieval experience, then you have less trauma, less pain, and everyone's really happy. So I want everyone to keep calm and get ahead of infertility. You can go to my website, watch my YouTube shows, send me an email, ask questions. We have a lot of great, exciting shows coming up. Have a great night. Thank you so much for listening and making The Egg Whisperer Show a part of your weekly routine. To find show notes and a full transcript for this episode, visit dramy.org and look under the blog tab. While you're there, you can find a link for The Egg Whisperer newsletter, which keeps you in the know about fertility news. You can also find Dr. Amy and The Egg Whisperer Show on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. If you'd like to learn even more, Dr. Amy offers classes at the Egg Whisperer School, eggwhispererschool.com, or you can request a consultation on dramy.org. Thank you so much for tuning in and for sharing the Egg Whisperer Show with others. Keep sparkling and have a great day.